All right. Welcome, friends and neighbors. This is Skix of Skixie's Greater Shows bringing you Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. Our current episode has the lovely and talented Nicole Marks. Hello, Nicole. Hello, Skix. I'm so happy to be here. Glad to have you. You are one of my favorite weirdos. Oh, well, the feeling is mutual. And Nicole has been with Gonzo Rising uh, from very early on. There she is in one of our posters, right there. Um, so, Nicole, can you introduce yourself to the people a little bit about what you do and what you're about? Wow, uh, what I'm about. Um, I'm a performer. Uh, I have been a performer for a very long time, uh, went to very fussy acting school and have done straight acting, um, but I really found my, I always used to say I found my birth mother, but I think it's more so that I found my calling as a performer when I discovered improvisation. Um, so I was in New York for some years and then California, LA for many years and discovered improv there and just felt so completely free. Um, I still act, uh, you know, when I can, when I can get paid, um, commercial work and that sort of thing. But, um, I also am a mom, uh, to a wonderful kiddo and, um, I have to work, I have to do a regular, I hate to call it a day job because it's, it's just a job, it's just the life of a performer sometimes that you have to supplement um, by not performing and take care of your family. So that's what I do. Um, I perform uh, a character um, that you know well, her name is Fanky Brownstead. And uh, she is a bon vivant and a life and death coach and also a sex therapist. So I've been performing Fampy for ooh, maybe 25 years. And uh, she grows and morphs and changes into different things um, for the audiences that she's with. And um, that is sort of my, my biggest performance passion. Um, and artistic um, half right now has been performing Fampy. Um, yeah, that's where I am. That's who I am. And and a wonderful person to boot. <laughs> that's and very a, sweet. Thank you. And a great person to work with. Um, I've really enjoyed sharing stage time with you. Um, as Fampy and, and as yourself, although it's mostly workshoppy that I, I've uh, spend time with you uh, as yourself doing improv, which is a recurring theme through many of these interviews, simply because I'm interviewing my friends. Sure. <laughs> Mostly. Um, can you tell us a little bit about where Femke came from? So, uh, back in the late 90s, um, I was part of an improv group in Los Angeles called Those Meddling Kids. Uh, we did genre-specific long-form improv. So the audience would vote on, you know, maybe there would be five different choices. Um, Shakespeare, Chekhov, uh, action, comedy. Uh, one very specific genre was 1976 to 81 cop drama. <laughs> you know, oh. these very... <laughs> uh, David Lynch, Twilight Zone. Um, they would vote on the top two, and then we would perform two one-act plays, essentially, in the style of um, these particular genres. And uh, each playlet would be 45 minutes or so, um, having an intermission between. And it was probably one of the, the safest spaces I, I ever had in improvisation to explore, to play all kinds of different people. Um, I definitely like to play men um, and use different accents and I'm a, I'm a character. And uh, as a troupe, 
we would meet twice a week, which now seems insane. I don't know how we ever did it. Um, and rehearsed, and we would also give each other assignments to sort of stretch and grow. And they weren't necessarily uh, with performance in mind. Uh, and one of our assignments to each other was to pull a name out of a hat. And, and I pulled a name out, and it said, Fanta, Fanky Roundstead. And I just had this immediate visceral response to this trying to be something, but a little bit missing the mark type of woman. Uh, I, I saw her as um, somewhat zoftig and uh, well-meaning, extraordinarily well-meaning, but a little bit off. Um, and then years later, uh, in about 2003, I developed a one-person show at the Gay and Lesbian Center in Los Angeles called Sex Life, My Journey Through Booty. And uh, <laughs> it was all about my sex life um, and uh, my different experiences and identities and all sorts of things. And um, I had this section um, of my one person show that was sort of my standpoint on gender and uh, sexual politics and no politics in the bedroom and being able to be um, free and part of the leather community if I wanted to be one day and another year something else. Um, and my director um, said to me, you know, Nicole, this is just, it's too preachy. Like, no one wants to hear this. Or the people who are here, they already know it. They already feel this stuff. Can you bring in a character that you have done? Um, or can we create a character? And immediately I went to Fampi. Um, because there's a safety in Fampi being somewhat um, not playing with a full deck. So it, it allows me um, as a person to not have all the answers. So these moments of uh, preachiness or, or, or sort of telling um, an audience the, the bare bones about who I am and what I stand for became this opportunity um, for this character to, to turn into a life coach, to turn into a sex therapist. And, uh, you know, humor is our great ladle for hot soup um, and um, it just became this kismet this meeting of oh this character is exactly right um, for for saying these things that are maybe a little bit tough to to listen to or tolerate or again be too you know preaching to the choir um, so that's how she kind of made her way into that arena sort of self-help performance and I'm, I'm so glad when I was starting Gonzo Rising, Tom said, Hey, my wife does something funny. <laughs> oh my God. Not as glad as I was. I was thrilled. I was oh. so excited that he had, he had mentioned something because it's hard in a place like Utah to find a home um, for something that can be very sexually explicit, as, as you well know. And very popular with the audiences. With... Notable, but very, very small exceptions. Very popular with the audience. <laughs> well, that's good to hear. Yes. I mean, I, I think, um, and there have always been people who didn't like Fanky or she rubbed them the wrong way. Um, Fanky is my opportunity to be uh, inclusive -ing, inclusively loving to everyone. So, you know, whereas I can be very introverted and, um, you know, I've been called an anti-socialite in the past, um, she is gregarious and she loves people. So even when she's getting, um, which I have been heckled before, um, one time you've experienced, yeah. um, but uh, she still respects people and loves them and assumes that they come from a place of their own pain and misunderstanding and confusion and it's not really about her. 
I think Femke would be... I can't always say for myself. Right. Right, well, our, our characters sometimes give us things that we don't have for ourselves. I mean, that's... I mean, that's what they are. 100%. I think yeah. Femke... I, you know, I'm a huge... Sorry, go ahead. Femke is the one we should call if we ever get uh, first contact from aliens. <laughs> that that's, a, that's a scene I would like to see. Yes. Um, the um, close encounter of the fifth kind where we can draw in alien energy. I think she would be all over that. Yeah. For sure. Um, I think, and, and we're not going to talk only about Femke. We're going to talk about you too, but um, I She's think... the best part of me. You think? Well, I, I'm sure that uh, being a mother, you know, my kid would say that <laughs> she actually doesn't like Femke that much um, because she misses me. Um, I definitely disappear into my characters, so I think she gets a little like, who is this creepy person? <laughs> um <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I think she embodies the best parts of me and also what I strive to be, which is understanding and um, open and wholly inclusive. Um, you know, I'm human and she's not. <laughs> so she can, she can be this magical being um, and I still have to answer to my humanity, which is not always um, the best. Okay, so listen, a lot of you know me as somewhat of a carrot top of sexuality, and uh, I'm not sure I like that. I'm not sure I want to be known for all sorts of props, right? So here I am, bare as I possibly can be. Let's everybody take a deep breath through your yoni. Oh, I like that sound. Ooh, squeeze it around in there. Blow it out. Everybody's got a yoni. We all started XX, right? So it doesn't matter if you're he, she, they, neither, all of it, Z. Breathe through your anus now. All right, and exhale on a football throw. Okay, I need a fan, a menopausal. Actually, I've had menopause many years ago, but I keep getting, oh, that's too much feedback, isn't it? Listen, do I have your consent to talk about the mechanism that brought you into this world? Yeah! That's what I needed, especially from the mermaids. I needed consent. Uh, now, um, some of you know me. Who knows me? Anyone? Yeah. Anyone know me biblically? <laughs> I thought that was you, hot stuff. How's that premature thing going? Is all right? The the one of the things I love about uh, Famke is that I've met her. People like her. People who are. So enthusiastic, but just a little clueless. I've, I've, mm -hmm. um, in my long and checkered life, I've gone to seminars uh, and things mm -hmm. with people like Famke. With, uh, uh, I, I did a seminar called the Body Erotic, you know, and oh, and, oh I love it. Uh, there's, uh, I, I was just watching a, a a video today about something called the One Taste movement, which is an orgasmic meditation movement. Hmm. Um, so, I mean, uh, you're, you're, you're doing a very broad and exaggerated character, but almost none of it is, is entirely fictional. It's, it's all stuff that exists out there. For sure. Uh, and, and, and just that love and cluelessness is so endearing, so hmm. endearing. And, um, people at first burst onto the scene. I, I think people sometimes are a little embarrassed or a little unsure how to take you. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I think you win them over pretty quick. Um, oh, good. There's a... Gosh, I don't know who's going to watch this. There's a, a sort of self-help session um, that meets at the theater sometimes, and occasionally I see a bit of fan key come out. Uh, oh, I and, love it. And uh, it, it's just hilarious. Um, well, and I think just like any any good actor, you can't 
judge um, the character that you play. You still have to embody this person. So her being clueless is just a part of who she is. And it is an allowance for me to take risks that I maybe wouldn't normally in my day to day life. Um, and my cluelessness as a person at times um, is very frustrating to me because I grew up with uh, some dyslexia, ADD, OCD, all sorts of different things, which I'm sure you can relate to. Well, I'm not sure you can relate to that. <laughs> uh, I think so. Um, but it, it again is such a freedom to be this character that I can um, let go of um, a lifetime of criticism that I have I've had from parents, from uh, teachers, from myself more than anything. Uh, so when I get to be her, she really doesn't hold on to criticism. And that's something that I would love to have as an attribute. And that segues very nicely into um, kind of my standard question for these is, how are you a weirdo? And you, 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 you threw a few things off that generally uh, put one in, into the weirdo category. Um, and I, and I want to um, make it clear that, that in this instance, weirdo is a badge of honor. I mean weirdo in the same way I mean weirdo with, uh, with Gonzo Rising, the, the, the outsider. Um, just because cruel kids can use the term against us uh, doesn't mean that the very thing they're mocking can't be a strength. Um, For sure. So, what are the some some of the ways Nicole is a weirdo? Um, well, it's funny. Uh, I feel like I've told you this before, but maybe not. Um, looking back recently at an old yearbook from I want to say sixth or seventh grade, um, and at the time, excuse me, I was in Hershey, Pennsylvania, and every single entry that someone wrote to me besides a teacher um, for, you know, hey, have a good summer, all of that stuff, had the word weird in it in <clears> response <throat> to me. And it was this moment of, wow. I mean, I have never felt like I fit in, though at times I was very popular. In high school, I was very popular. I'd moved around a bit. And so I, I think by the time I got to high school, I was kind of like, ah, can I swear? Yeah, oh yeah. Okay, so, uh, you know, ah, fuck it, I'm going to do what I want to do, I'm going to wear what I want to wear, and I don't care um, what the people around me think, which, you know, um, I don't know that that feeling always uh, pervaded, I, I for sure um, would care at times, uh, but I just knew that I was something other than people normally experienced, I never felt part of the group, um, always outside. Uh, I think some of it had to do with uh, living in Japan as a very young girl. Uh, I was only there for about four years, but it's all my earliest memories. And I think when I moved to the States, to Pennsylvania, I was kind of um, a strange Caucasian Asian person to people. You know, right. they just didn't know how to deal with me. Um, but I have always, um, sometimes taken things too literally. I think this is part of ADD for me. Um, I wasn't very good in school. Um, I didn't know how to play, um, excuse my red marks. Um, I have that weird type of skin that if you scratch it, it marks up. So I look like I have hickeys on me. Um, Do you ever draw demonic symbols? Oh, I have. Yes, like that one artist. What's her name? Uh, yeah. yeah, I know who you mean, but I can't think of her name. I'm trying to do a pentagram, but I think I'm doing a Star of David. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it does. There definitely um, are those that confuse the two. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, I just um, try as I might. I'm sure there were moments in my life where I tried to be a certain way, uh, but I never could. I'm just kind of um, un unapologetically who I am, you know, and sort of loud about it uh, as much as I've, 
an introvert. I have to stand up and be me. So, um, yeah, I recently had someone reach out on Instagram uh, to me, and it was someone I went to grade school with and a little bit of middle school before I moved away from Hershey. And um, I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know this was you. It's so amazing. Your life is incredible, blah, blah, blah. Um, I remember liking you so much in elementary school, like we palled around. Uh, and he said, you know, I just was always impressed that you just didn't give a fuck. And, and that <laughs> rang at like a clarion call in my head of, oh, I, even if I did give a fuck, I, I let out this energy, which was, this is who I am, like it or not, you don't like it too fucking bad even at age 12. Right. So um, I think that's hard for a lot of people to digest. Um, yeah, I, th I don't know. I think the um, if there's a, a universal among the joyous weirdos, I, I think that uh, each of us comes to a point at some point where we just have to say fuck it. Um, I think that's where it translates from being um, oppressed al almost. I, you know, I, I don't want to overstate it, but um, that that's a transitional moment where you become uh, empowered. Like, uh, fuck it. You know, I'll wear yeah. what I want. I'll do what I want. I'll, you know, I'll stop being in the closet. I'll stop pretending I'm something I'm not. Mm -hmm. Um and that doesn't make all the problems go away, but it is empowering. It is. It is empowering. And I, I posit that um, the weirdos don't know how to be any other thing. Right. You know, it, it's just this point that you get to of, yeah, it's fuck it now, but maybe it's always been fuck it. <laughs> that maybe um, that kind of vehement self expression and self-knowledge is what makes us weird i don't know i mean and i don't know i i definitely i play parts all the time i have a very straight job um and uh i play a role there i have to be a certain way and it's exhausting because i'm not really being myself but i know myself <laughs> wouldn't exactly be um, appropriate for this workplace. So, you know, as as a 50-year-old person now, I feel like, okay, well, I know when I have to do this and I know when I can be this. So, so it, it, it is uh, necessary to compartmentalize as much as you can just to get by in society. I think so. Yeah, don't you feel that way? Ab absolutely. Um, I am less weird on the bus or at a job interview than I am on stage. I think when I'm on stage, I'm probably at my freest uh, mm, in a lot of for ways. For sure. I feel that way too, uh, 100%. In fact, I'm freer on stage than in any other part of my life. You know, I mean, yes, when I'm hanging out with my husband and daughter, I'm myself, but there is there is something I am allowed to be and express and share um, that is can be uncomfortable, maybe, um, that you just, you sail on that freedom. For those curious and unfamiliar with Famke, we will be playing a clip with your permission. Oh, great, uh, yes. Absolutely. At, at the end of the conversation. Uh, and uh, stay tuned. I'm pretty sure we'll see more of Famke, uh, both in Gonzo Rising, and, and perhaps I can entice Famke into doing an interview somewhere down the line. Oh, she would be so happy to do that. But she would talk the whole time, just so you know. That's <laughs> perfectly fine. It makes my job easier. Um, and as a parting shot, do you have any advice for weirdos? I mean, some, a lot of it has come up in the conversation, but for a young person uh, in particular who's uh, feeling a bit weird, do you have any advice? I think uh, the biggest piece of advice is to treat yourself with gentleness. Um, we have 
this kind of American illness that we have to constantly be striving and we have to get the A and we have to get into this college and we have to, you know, have a white picket fence and all of that bullshit. And um, those of us weirdos feel the need for different paths. And I think it's especially important for people who have grown up in very strong religious um, backgrounds, families, that uh, that you don't beat yourself up, that you um, allow self-hatred to be backburnered for self-love and find the parts of you that make sense um, to celebrate and and all parts of you are to celebrate. Um, and uh, it's less hard than you think it is. You know, think of yourself as that little kid who maybe didn't get the love that they needed and imagine in your mind's eye that you're taking care of that little being uh, that's deep inside of you and be gentle. The, um, I was in therapy today, which is related to my own weird owners, um, and the, the big focus of the conversation was compassion for yourself. Um, and, and I think I think it's it's true. That's really important. And it's taken me a long time to get to that. I mean, I'm I'm old, <laughs> you know. But um, I think it's the thing I keep coming back to again and again um, is that you have to honor yourself for who you are and where you are in your life, and it's okay who you are and where you are in your life. Yeah, I think that's a great note to end on. So, and this is Nicole and Skix for Here Comes the Weirdo Parade. See you next week. Bye, thank you. God bless you all. God save the king. a certificate in human sexuality from the Manatee Community College in Sarasota, Florida. Go Manatee! I have been an edutainer. Don't look for me to give you the real scoop. Find yourself a sexual therapist. Find yourself someone who can give you the skinny. My skinny is more entertainment based I do vaudeville, I do burlesque, thank you, thank you, thank you, I'll take wolf whistles. Okay, okay, um, something I wanted to talk about as we're on the eve of Jesus Christ's resurrection. I don't care who you believe in, what you believe in, God, Goddess, Buddha, Shiva, Allah, Heavenly Father, Flying Spaghetti Monster, Gaia, it's all the same to me. But Jesus teaches us a little something, plie. <laughs> Jesus coming back to life is a wonderful metaphor for us these times. It's been a shit show, y'all. And I don't swear, you know that. We are coming out of the darkness. We are pulling our innards and our loins. I gotta have access to my loins. <sighs> we are coming back to life after 
after these three days, okay, almost three years of COVID, still with us, it's not gone. By the way, when I blow my nose, it is not COVID. I tested myself literally right before. I'm sorry. <laughs> 